satisfying with respect to this meeting, satisfying the time, date, and location included in the annual notice adopted at the reorganization meeting of the board to file with the city clerk of the city of Patterson, posted in city hall and mail to at least two newspapers in accordance with the provisions of the law. I'd like to call the role Chairman Jackson. Is that okay with you, sir? Commissioner, Commissioner Dumas. President. Commissioner Furman. Commissioner Furman. Commissioner Furman, can you hear me, sir? <laughs> Commissioner Altis? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Levine. Yes. Commissioner President. Commissioner Rogim. Yes, I'm here. Commissioner Watkins. Commissioner Watkins. Present. Commissioner Ro um I don't even know I lost my space. Hold on. Commissioner Hodges. Yes. Thank you. I apologize. So we're okay. Commissioner Furman. Can you repeat that? Your presence, please. Yes, I'm present. Thank you. I think that you need to get closer to your mics because I don't hear you very well. Okay. And lastly, and importantly, is uh, Chairman Jackson. We have eight you commissioners the, present. You can the make. Okay, I um, I'll read it because I uh, I can have time. Notice pursuant to the Open Public Meetings Act addressing effect of coronavirus measures on the next public meeting. Consistent with the coronavirus related restrictions of Executive Board Number One Hundred Seven, given on Saturday, March twenty first, two thousand and twenty, by Governor Philip D. Murphy, the Board of Adjustment of the City of Patterson will not conduct any person participation of the public at all future meetings until further notice. However, public participation will be available on means of communication equipment pursuant to NJSA 104-8, commencing on Wednesday, April 23rd, 2020, at 7.30 p.m. Though there may be potentially be a practical need for a limited number of administrative technical or other city personnel to be present in or near the city council chambers, third floor, city of Patterson, city Hall. Participation is prohibited. Nevertheless, for reasons of compliance with the said executive order, number 107, public participation will be available by calling 1-973-321-1579, meeting number ID. 711-680-0071. Board of Adjustment regular meeting of Thursday, September 24th, 2020 at 7.30 p.m. on the date and time that the meeting is scheduled to commence. The public may also participate in the meeting by addressing the website of the city of Patterson, www.pattersonnj.gov and following the email links for the meeting, www.patterson.gov gov slash board of adjustment on thursday september 24th there will be a regularly scheduled meeting of the patterson board of adjustment which will be held at 7 30 p.m by a webinar session virtual meeting the following matters will be heard number one m m brothers elf fp llc carried from may 28th 2020 meeting 577 579 River Street, 581, 583 River Street, and 585 River Street, Block 2004, that's 9, 10, and 11. Application to construct a new two story commercial building, including a base. The first floor will consist of the Tropicana Club Bar, Go Go Lounge, and Restaurant with basement. The first floor will contain actually dining area, bar areas, and dance floor. The second floor will contain two offices and manager security offices. 
The applicant is providing 16 on-site parking spaces of the 87 parking spaces that are required. This is for use both in site and in a B1 zone. Chairman and commissioners and staff, I was uh, um, sent uh, an email from Mr. Maraconda and I think that they will not proceed and they want to withdraw the application. Mr. Maraconda, are you there? Mr. Evans? Hello. I hear you, sir. Is Mr. Maraconda with you? No, he's not. Um, I believe that they are withdrawing the application. I have a, um, a, a contract purchaser who's, who would be doing a new application for that property. Um, so, because I did not receive anything in my office, but did speak to the attorney, I have nothing formal to um, present to the board. But you ask the architect to speak to Mr. Araka and see if this is something that is acceptable. Maggie, they, they were scheduled for this evening. The applicant's not here. Applicant's attorney's not here. I have, um, the last email I have, the applicant's not here. According to my, the attorney, Mr. Marconda, suggested that he wanted to withdraw this application in its entirety. So, so it's withdrawn? Uh, yeah, but we, we should go on this. Oh, so there was no attorney present. No, we don't, we don't. It's withdrawn. It's withdrawn? Thank you. The application of 577, 579 River Street, 581, 583 River Street, and 585 River Street, M&M Brothers, FPLOC, 2004, that's 9, 10, 11, has been withdrawn by the Board of Adjustment without prejudice. Am I correct? Withdrawn by the applicant. It's withdrawn. Without prejudice? Without prejudice, correct. Thank you, sir. Okay. Let's proceed to the second. Hope and Love International Deliverance Ministries Incorporated, 568, 572 East 19th Street, Block 3401, Lots 19 and 20. Application to convert a two-story industrial warehouse into a house of worship in a residential zone. The applicant does not meet the requirements in the zoning ordinance section 500-5.3, places of worship in residential districts. The applicant will provide 13 parking spaces of 90 spaces that are required. This is for use all D variances in site plan in an RP4W fourth court RA-2 zone. Is the applicant present? We are present. Are there any interested parties or objectors at this time? We do not know, but we are receiving phone calls. Number three, DTF Holdings, LLC, 182-188 East 33rd Street. No. Can I have a moment, please? Oh, yeah. um, block 182-188 East 33rd Street, Block 8504, Lot 5. Application to construct a five-story, 32-unit apartment building on a vacant 10,937.50 square foot lot. The first floor will contain 32 covered parking spaces. The second through fifth floors will contain four one-bedroom and four two-bedroom apartments per floor for a total of 32 apartments. The applicant is providing 32 parking spaces of the 61 spaces that are provided or required. This is for useful D variances and site plan in an H1 zone. Is the applicant present? Mr. Sharno did submit a letter and I um, I opened this meeting and now hand it over to our attorney, Mr. Rocco. Uh, yes, I, I spoke to Mr. Sharno. They're not right to proceed this evening. Uh, notice needs to be effectuated. He asked for the first available date uh, in October or beyond. And the understanding is that, is that November 12th is available? One moment, sir. November 12th, 2020 at 7.30 p.m. Thank you. The only thing is that you have to put on the record, because I know he did, but waive statutory time requirements. Is that correct? 
Now, you raise that sort of time requirement to any he still has to notice. Absolutely. There, there, there will be notice. He will notice again? If you didn't notice for this evening, one of the reasons why I have to. Thank you for that on the record. Thank you very much, Mr. Long. Chairman Benson, we can proceed now to the application of Open Love International Deliverance Ministries, Incorporated 568 I-72 East 9 T Street. Proceed. Is this the attorney? Ready to start our case? I am, sir. Thank you very much. Good evening, all. Uh, my name is Therese Richardson. I'm a friend here in Patterson, past 36 years. I represent the applicant, Open Love International Deliverance Ministries. Can you hear me? Because I, I, I'm hearing a back, a kickback. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, I did, yeah. It's like some noise in the background. Yeah, it sounds like it's. I'm getting a, a throwback too. Uh, the Limerence Ministry is now seeking site plan approval, conditional use, and variance approval to convert an existing structure located at 568, 572 East 19th Street to a house of worship. Uh, the property is located in the redevelopment uh, zone of the fourth ward. The structure is a two-story industrial building, which has been vacant and in a state of disrepair for over 15 years. My clients recently acquired the property. My clients intend to invest more than $400,000 to convert the site and redevelop this location and this area in the community. This would be an added value to this community to improve the site. Um, the front setback, height, stories, lots, coverage, and all of that are okay. The plan site calls for 98 spaces. We propose 13 for off-site parking. Um, I know that's a short call. However, uh, this section of East 19th Street it is really limited with residential use. There's not a lot of residential homes in that section. Um, the street is not subject really to heavy traffic. There are auto repair shops in this area that keep traffic during the week and make it a little bit more congested. But the good thing here is, is we're going to take these lemons and make lemonade. We're going to only be using this on a Sunday, so the, the area's congestion will not really be an issue for us. Uh, our Sundays, uh, services and our Wednesday and Thursday uh, prayer hours are limited use. This would be ideal for this site because if any other use was to be there, there would be absolutely no other parking available uh, to accommodate this size of structure. Um, our limited use would fit ideally with uh, the existing conditions. Um, the redevelopment of this uh, would promote the health, safety, welfare, and overall morals of this, this site and the community. Love and Hope has a mission to reach and influence the world by changing mindsets, empowering and equipping people to lead forward. We intend a strong community outreach. We intend to build families and help families structure within all of our communities and global outreach. Um, we, we're submitting this application. Uh, Mr. Evans will give you, I have here tonight, Valret, Dr. Valretta Chapman Wilson, who is the presiding pastor, as well as, I'm sorry, bishop, presiding bishop, as well as Mr. Evans to give more indication uh, about the plans as we've submitted. All right. Um, with that being said, um, I guess Mr. Evans can explain. I think the biggest issue would be the parking issue, which has been uh, touched on by uh, the, the city planner. Um, parking. Um, Dr. Chapman is going to give you some insight on what she's done to kind of bring that issue back into compliance, if at all possible. <coughs> um, and Mr. Evans will give you some more insight on how 
structure itself is going to be uh, rehabbed and presented to be an improvement to this area. Okay, you can present your first witness. Okay, I present the rest. Mr. Who are you going to present first? Loretta Chapman, Dr. Oh. Chapman. Sure. Um, Ms. Chapman, can you please raise your right hand? Yes. Do you swear our current testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Say your full name for the record, please. Loretta Chapman Wilson. I can proceed? Yes. Thank you. Dr. Chapman Wilson, you are the Bishop of Ben and Company World International Religious Center Space. Yes. And you recently purchased a property at 572 East 19th Street? Yes. And you intend to convert that building as approved to a house of worship? Yes. Now, um, we understand that the building as it is now sits in a, 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 a redevelopment zone, which requires, um, it's in the fourth ward, but requires a substantial amount of repairs. Can you explain what your repairs would be? Well, we are planning to put a sanctuary on the upstairs floor and on the downstairs. We would have uh, a pantry and a, a, like a little banquet hall, and because what we want to do, we're, we're, we, if approved, we're planning to have like a community pantry to serve the uh, people who would need food and, and stuff like that. And also, we would like to, the, the, if I can just jump to the parking, I, I, our members, most of our members, uh, live close in close proximity to that area. So they would be walking, they wouldn't be really driving, and the ones who drive, they would be carpooling, and we have currently a 15-seater, and we are looking to acquire another one very soon that we would use to pick up uh, the elderly or indigent or those who would need a ride and we would, you know, bust them back and forth. So we are really looking to open and praying that we will be approved because I know we will be doing great improvement to that area and we would be serving uh, a great deal of people in that community. What happens at you, if any, made to uh, sort of return to compliance on the parking? I'm what sorry? Efforts, what efforts, if any, have you made to sort of return yourself to compliance with regards to parking under the existing conditions? Okay, I have spoken to Calvary Baptist that has a parking lot next to the building. We were in good communication, favorable communication, and then, I'm sorry, the pandemic came in, and they are now not in operation right now, but I'm looking to get back into, and working with them as soon as they're back in operation. I've also spoken to some of the other businesses around the area that has parking and I am looking to receive parking from them but because of the pandemic most people are not in operation right now and our 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 parishioners have already agreed that they will carpool they will the ones are so close some of them they will walk to the building Correct. Now, well, your hours of operation, when will you be primarily uh, in use of the building? I'm sorry? Your hours of operation. Okay. So on, on Sundays, we would 
be in the building from 10 to 12. And then on Wednesday from 7 to Excuse me, I don't, I need to intervene right now. Yes. Teresa Richardson, there's something that you have on. I don't know, I don't think it's Mrs. Wilson, but whoever has their TV on or any interruption must mute their mic. I have nothing on. Okay, Richardson, it seems that it comes from you as well. I just want to make sure. Huh. Okay, let's yeah. try again. Proceed. Do you see that with the noise? Yes. Well, could it be my cell phone that's sitting near me? Yes. So I, I have to say this. I keep hearing. Uh, I don't. I know it's not Mrs. Wilson, so it has to be you. All right. Well, I, I have no idea what it is. Well, there I, is interruption. Can you please shut it off? Because it's I, not on. My cell phone's not on. I was just thinking maybe it. I, I don't have any idea. Okay. Now we're okay. Can you okay. hear? Everyone hears her without static. It's, it's fine, I don't hear it now. All right, thank you. Proceed, everyone. All right. I'm sorry, Ms. Sherman. Um, okay. So our services, we, ha we, we, we would have Sunday morning, 10 o'clock, then 12. Mm -hmm. And on Wednesday, 7.30 to 8.30 for prayer and Bible study. And Friday, 7.30 to 8.30. Those hours are not hours that is high traffic because businesses are not open those times. So we would not necessarily, I don't think we would be having parking issues. Okay. Is there anything else you would like the commissioners to hear about your effort before I can get the but also, when we when we saw the building and then purchase it, this building was so badly run down, and we are looking to make a beautiful edifice out of the building, which of course would improve the 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 community, and we want to help youth and adults who are less fortunate so we have a lot of great ideas so i'm hoping and praying everyone will work with us and grant us the approval thank you i have nothing further i guess mr evans would be my next next witness any questions um gary uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Why well, do you get your name, right? Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Okay, Maggie. Yes, sir. Okay, uh, Dr. Uh, Chairman Wilson, uh, I'd just like to go over your hours. You said Sunday, 10 a.m. To, to noon. Yes. Wednesday night uh, or Wednesday morning, 7.30 to 8.30? Wednesday night, 7.30, 7 to 8.30. And that's also on Friday night, 7.30 to 8.30? Yes. Okay. Now, uh, I noticed on the plans uh, from Mr. Evans that we have a, 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 we're proposing a, 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 a commercial kitchen, which is roughly about 25 by 25. Mr. Evans doesn't have a dimension on it, but it looks like it's pretty big. We also have a banquet hall. Now, what is that going to be used for? Well, for for the, the 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 banquet hall, that would just be that in the, in the event that you know we would sit in the the banquet hall if we are having say maybe a dinner with the parishioners, we would sit in the banquet hall, and for the kitchen, I we would like to do a food pantry. And somehow, you know, if at some point, like say Thanksgiving or so, we could serve if we are permitted to serve Thanksgiving dinner or so, just to help people in the community who might not have a dinner. 
But if, 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 if you're going to keep the kitchen open for the pantry, what, what days is that going to be? Uh, and uh, um, also, uh, um, are there uh, parties or, 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 or uh, religious events for the parishioners that you have, that you, you have such a, a big banquet hall and a big kitchen? Well, obviously, it's there for a reason. Uh, I'm just trying to find out when you're going to use it. Well, if we have, if we do have a dinner, most of our events, would, it would be on a Sunday. Okay, so Sunday you would be there more than 10 to 12 then. If, 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 if you have a service, then and if you have a dinner afterwards. The time we're not in two hours, sorry. Okay. All right. Uh, uh, and, and obviously, uh, you're preparing a... a, a Sanctuary meeting uh, uh, area for over 200 people. So that means you anticipate close to that amount, I'm going to guess. Is, is that not correct? You're making a seating arrangement for over 200 people. So I'm assuming that you're going to use over 200, uh, you're expecting over 200 people. Excuse me, Gary. Um, excuse me. I, I I don't believe that'll that'll be every Sunday. I don't I don't believe you that the bank would all open every Sunday. That's just for special occasions. All right. Am I correct? Correct. Okay. But, but uh, 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 on Sunday, do you you anticipate two hundred people uh, at your services? What we 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 are we are not. Anticipating 200 people now, but if, if say later on, maybe, but right now, and even with a social distancing, if you know, we don't know when this pandemic might end, we would probably have maybe 100 at, at some point, not right now, but at some point. Okay, all right, uh, that was all with Jerry, uh, that I have for Dr. Chad Wilson. Any commissioners have for questions for the applicant? This, excuse me, Mr. LaRocca, can you open it up to the public, please? Yes, please. Yes. The members of the public, if you have any questions of this witness, you can call 973-321-1579. And when prompted to enter the meeting ID number 711-680-0071. And once again, that's if you have questions specific to the testimony. You will have an opportunity at the end to speak and give a comment if you like. Now is the opportunity to question this witness about her testimony. And again, the phone number is 973-321-1579. And the meeting ID is 711-680-0071. Let's give it a moment to see if anybody calls. Mr. Evans, please. 
<laughs> Mr. Evans, please raise your right hand. You swear for a testimony you're about to give us the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Say your full name for the record. Matthew Evans, architect planner, 470 Chamberlain Ave, Patterson, New Jersey. Thank you. I'll post uh, the plan to. Mr. Evans, do you prepare the plans for Hope Club and International Deliverance Ministry? Yes. And you posted those, oh, very nice, man. Posted those online? Uh, on the screen? Yes. Okay. Um, so you're familiar with the location 568 572 East 19th Street? Yes. And these plans uh, purport to uh, convert this property into a house of worship? Yes. Can you explain S1, please? Okay. Uh, we have a uh, submission uh, school plans, architectural plans. Uh, the first sheet is S1, which has been revised based on the planner uh, planner's comments. Let me see what we have. We have a revision date of January uh, is that 18. But hold on. We have January 18th, 2020, from the planner's report of 11520. So those are the revisions. I, I'll go through those. Um, based on some of the um, comments in the letter. The proposed property is a basically a through property. It goes from East 18th Street to East 19th Street. Uh, it's an existing um, low, uh, industrial building, which is vacant for many years. I believe it was a machine shop previously uh, before the church had purchased the property. Uh, it's been vacant. They had fixed the roof, uh, patched up some uh, some of the structural damage that was um, um, what they got when they bought the property. And um, the improvements which we would be doing, um, we have a small one-story addition uh, on the first floor, and we are improving uh, the main entrance, which is East 18th Street, we have um, an existing driveway, which we would have an in and out driveway. Uh, and we have, we're going to pave that parking lot and provide handicapped parking uh, for the main entrance of that um, church conversion. This would be an adaptive reuse of the existing um, structure, which is um, encouraged in the redevelopment zone. And um, as you know, if you've seen the building passing by, it's in, in disrepair, and uh, I believe the church wants to, um, you know, spend money and make this and improve this into a house of uh, worship for them. Um, I'll go through the variances. Um, the property is in the RA2 zone. That's the uh, Fourth Ward Redevelopment Zone. It's a, um, it's, a, it's a residential zone predominantly and permit some other uses. We are proposing a house of worship, which is a standalone um, uh, a house of worship use, which we'd be seeking a variance for. Uh, churches are permitted um, in residential zones, uh, but we need to, um, in this redevelopment zone, we need to uh, provide um, uh, proof for that, which we will do. Uh, the lot area is uh, minimum for a church is a half an acre. We have uh, 11,400, uh, I believe, in 37 square feet. Uh, that would be um, less than a half an acre, but it's still large lots, as you can see from the tax map um, uh, in the area. It's adjacent to the uh, Rico Foods, uh, which is an industrial site. Uh, pre-existing non conforming use. Uh, the uh, side setback minimum is 10 feet. The, the, the existing is 2.1 feet, and that is a pre-existing non conforming condition. Side setback, the other uh, is 10 feet. We have 9.1 feet. It's a little try of 10. That's also a pre-existing non conforming condition. The rear setback is. Yeah. Service, uh, Darren Papalosi, uh, 
it, it's not pre-existing because you're adding on. It's an expansion of a non-performing that's a variance. It's not pre-existing. The nine foot. Oh, okay. So the nine foot is um, on the on the um, on the um, on the one-story addition side. So that would be. Um, we would be we're going along the line of the building, but we would be seeking relief for that condition that we're proposing. So that would be, um, there also is a pre existing a 9.1, uh, but we would be uh, seeking relief for that, as I mentioned. Pending, yes. Okay. Uh, the rear setback is also a front setback uh, where we have a minimum of 10 feet, uh, we have zero. Um, that is basically on East 19th Street side. It's basically an existing building, which is along the property line with an existing egress stair um, encroaching into that right away. Um, that we would be seeking uh, relief for the um, pre-existing non-conforming condition. Building height conforms, stories conform, uh, lot building coverage conforms. We are 41% uh, where 60% is um, permitted maximum. And uh, basically one of the bigger uh, variances we would be seeking is the parking variance. Uh, we need one per three seats for the church. Uh, we would need um, a variance for that. We have... Um, 68 spaces required. Then we have um, one per 75 square feet of assembly area, 22 spaces, uh, total 98 parking spaces. We have 12 parking spaces, which we've created on the site. And we, um, where none was before, this was just vacant land at, at the time. I don't ever believe there was parking there. We have the uh, 10 spaces on the East 18th Street side, and then we have uh, two parking spaces uh, along the um, side of the building on the East 19th uh, Street side. That would be um, repave and restrike that, and that would be employee parking area. You could also um, do a valet or, or a tandem type of parking if, um, if, if they could. Um, coordinate that within the with the uh, church. So, but we're just showing what is uh, permitted uh, as per the uh, ordinance. The, um, we've said, we've shown additional variances, which uh, the planners uh, pointed out. Uh, we have parking in the front yard is prohibited. We uh, have one proposed. We'd be seeking relief for that and um, the relief that we're seeking is based on uh, trying to provide as much parking on the site as possible, um, but we would be seeking relief for that setback condition. Uh, the refuse enclosure also, um, five feet, um, we show uh, five feet is here on, um, we've adjusted that in accordance with the planner's uh, letter also. Um, we show the refuse area along uh, the uh, side property. And um, the, also the condition 10 foot from a building, uh, and we have three feet proposed. We'd be seeking uh, uh, relief for that condition also. So um, that's the site plan. We have some new street trees provo uh, we're provo <coughs> excuse me, proposing based on uh, the beautification requirements in the fourth ward redevelopment zone. And uh, we have a new concrete entry walkway uh, for the main entrance of, of the uh, church. So I'll go to the next sheet that shows our lighting um, and shows the site lighting within the entry along the side and on uh, the East 19th Street side. So we have um, we have wrap lighting we're proposing, which is a LED lighting, and it's very durable and long lasting, and it should be uh, um, good for this type of use. We show the refuse area enclosure with trash um, details, and then we have curb uh, details, sidewalk improvement details, 
sign details uh, for the site improvements that we're proposing on the um, property. We have um, the next sheet shows the architectural plans. So we have both plans, the first floor plan, the area is 4,236 um, square feet. Basically, with the exception of the addition, which is the recycling room and the uh, coat storage, um, the rest of the footprint would remain and would not be um, expanded upon. Everything was done within the uh, building footprint. So we have a main entrance, we have the lobby area, we have another main uh, foyer that would bring you up to the second floor. So, uh, and then we also have the welcome center uh, to the right of that, coat storage. Uh, there's an existing powder room on the first floor. We have utility storage and uh, we're proposing a new uh, lift from the first floor to the second floor um, for accessibility. The uh, banquet hall multi-purpose room um, was basically a large open space, which was previously um, took up. It was all open. Uh, now we're going to, to divide it up with men's and women's room. We have uh, the proposed kitchen and um, walk-in boxes and uh, associated kitchen equipment. That it would be the first floor. We show the second floor. Um, we have um, an office, a pastor's office. We have a private bathroom and another office, uh, which would be uh, off of the um, sanctuary space. That's basically to the rear of the sanctuary space. So you come up on the lift or you come up the stairs you uh, enter the sanctuary space, which shows a maximum of 204 people. It's 2,650 square feet. And then we have the pulpit area uh, with the baptistry, and um, we have another door uh, accessing storage and the rear uh, fire egress to the, um, uh, the East 19th Street side. Uh, the area of that uh, second floor, um, we have the first and second. We have a total of um, 7,772 square feet. The second floor is 4,236 square feet. Uh, go to the next sheet. We're showing the improvements uh, on the bu building. It's an existing mill building, which would be um, adaptively uh, reused for this purpose. And basically, we have the East 19th Street side, which we would improve and uh, <clears throat> provide new windows, uh, pointing, cleaning up the, the brick masonry. Uh, we're showing the pr uh, proposed new uh, addition. The right side elevation shows the addition, the existing uh, windows, which I mentioned we would have um, fit with new uh, similar type windows throughout the uh, space. And also the front elevation, we have the uh, one of the main entrances here for uh, the congregation space on the first floor. And then we have the entrance uh, academy to the left, which would pre predominantly be for the sanctuary space on the second floor. The left side elevation is basically uh, the massing and everything would remain um, just with the uh, exceptions of new uh, windows and improvements to the masonry and um, those associated uh, improvements aesthetic. So um, that's basically what we're proposing um, for this um, proposal. Mr. Evans, are you finished? Yes. Mr. Chairman? Yes, go ahead, Gary. Okay. Uh, uh, Mr. Evans, uh, uh, I received this, uh, I think, today, 
And I'm not sure if you got it. The uh, letter from the Historic Preservation Commission. Did you get that? No, I didn't. Okay. The property is not located in the, the historic district, but I think the building is considered historic. And the commission wanted to know uh, uh, what you were doing to the facade. Uh, 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 so I'm asking these questions for the commission, I guess, because of uh, the application is here tonight. I don't know if they're going to call in, but they were concerned. One, the, the facade is, is it going to stay the same brick that it is. Uh, uh, I noticed you're changing the windows. Is that going to change the... Uh, the, the look of the building, is it going to change the uh, historic uh, uh, scenario uh, for this piece of property? Well, we want to keep the, uh, I mean, as you can see from the, uh, the elevations we've drawn, we really haven't uh, done anything, you know, um, altered the structure. It's basically, it, it appears to be... Um, you know, actually the way it was constructed originally. We would like to put the windows in and do an appropriate window style that um, if it were um, required, we would meet with uh, John Franco from Historic Preservation and submit a sample of the window or any other um, materials that they may uh, need to see as part of um, the improvements we're proposing. The East 18th Street side would probably be the most um, changed, but we have basically just entrances and canopies, which would be um, the main uh, alterations to the property. But you can see the windows would remain and the uh, basically the massing and uh, the aesthetic of the existing building would remain uh, as as it was uh, originally. The, the, uh, windows so. are, the windows are not going to remain. You're going to change the windows. That's what, uh, uh, are you going to change them? Uh, in other words, it's, uh, yeah, uh, are they going to look, uh, the windows uh, have that look that they have now? Or I guess this rustic historic look, or you're going to put in like Pella windows that is modern and, you know, no, we, even when I show here the note, it says replace existing windows throughout to match existing style. So the style of a du large double hung would remain, um, and we could we could um, you know dialogue with with uh, historic preservation to see if there's anything um, that they would want to see. We've done it in previous applications and been successful throughout. Um, properties in downtown and um, the historic districts. Okay, uh, that's good. Uh, uh, I think uh, the, the, the commissioners would like that because uh, they did have some questions to historic uh, preservation. Also, uh, what about signs? Are there going to be any flashing signs, any ID signs? I, I didn't see anything on the plan. Uh, uh, what well, we're just, well, I mean, standard directional or, or um, signs that would be permitted in the U in the zone, any other type of signs um, that would be proposed would be have to come before a board if if they didn't meet the, the criteria of um, of the ordinance, especially if it's a flashing sign or a large um, LED sign or something like that. Um, there's been some other churches in the area. Um, median area had have signs and they've gone it through appropriate um, courses to get the um, signs approved or modified. Okay, that, that is probably another thing. Uh, I'm sure the historic commission doesn't want one of those flashing signs that tell you uh, upcoming events and stuff like that in different colors because I guess it would take away from the building itself. Now, uh, <laughs> Uh, just to go over the variances, I think you 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 you, you run over them all. Aside from the use, uh, minimum lot area is twenty one seven hundred eighty square feet. You're providing eleven thousand four hundred thirty seven point eight. The site setback uh, 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 ten, and you're proposing nine because of the uh, expansion. Uh, Ninety eight parking spaces are required. You're proposing twelve. 
The dumpster must be 12, uh, 10 feet from the main building, and you are now at three. No front yard parking is allowed. You're proposing front yard parking, and parking must be three feet from the property line. You're proposing one foot. Let's now take uh, all the uh, uh, variances that you agreed with. Yes. Okay. All right. Uh, 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 other than that, uh, uh, Chairman, uh, I have nothing for Mr. Evans. I, I just wanted to uh, see if there was any expansion on the uh, uh, for the Historic uh, for the Preservation Commission. So uh, my, uh, my testimony for uh, Mr. Evans is complete. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any commissioners with questions for the architect? Yeah, and this is uh, Jonathan Hodges. How close are you to the Calvary Baptist Church and their parking arrangements? So um, let me look at the, go to the tax map here. So, no, it's not a lot. Right. Uh, I'm not absolutely sure. Um, let me get my. Um, we're on this side. I believe Calvary's here. Let me see where we are. Let me zoom in a little more. So we, I believe, um, this is the um, Calvary site uh, on East 18th and um, what's this, 11th. Um, 12th of I believe. Um, here, um, so we have. Mr. Mr. Evans, if I may, the yeah. adjoining property, the site to be converted, my client's firm, there is a separate lot owned by Calvin. Calvin. Oh, that's right directly adjacent to it. Exactly right. And it has 28 spaces for parking in the that is not really being used. It's being used by the car lot across the street. And it's not being used on Sundays. So that is what they were talking to them about uh, because it's right next to the building. Not the church itself, but the parking lot adjacent to the property. That's correct. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But you don't currently have an arrangement or any kind of. Um, just, you, you, you're in discussions, but you haven't really formalized any plan. I, um, as a secretary, Mr. Commissioner Hodges, have not, the ad came into the paper only for what's at front of us right now. I haven't had any lease or anything admitted into this. If not, the, uh, the ad, the public notice would have included that. So I think that the attorney must answer this question. Well, I, I can see that, but although we were in negotiations, I mean, due to unforeseen circumstances. You may be in negotiations, but it's not presented in the advertising. I should have had it brought into my office for my plan for an attorney to discuss it. So I don't think this is something that should be discussed because the advertisement in this meeting must be either discussed or carried to another date to include this project, this property. I know exactly. And no inspection has been made there, uh, Ms. Richardson, uh, for that availability, if it is there. Okay. On the planner, Gary. So, so I, I, I wasn't aware of anything like that, so I didn't make any inspection. One, to see if the spaces are there. Two, to see if the lot is striped. Three, if, if, if it's, there's access. So I don't have uh, any report on lot 10, which is the adjoining lot. I understand completely. Um... My I, um, I would like to really address my chairman at this moment, please. Chairman Daxton, as well as you know, and commissioners as a secretary, and Mr. Laranca, this should have been made very aware to me and to Mr. Gary, even before me, but you can't present a case if I didn't put it in the ad. And on top of that, I don't think that this is something that should be brought to any commissioner 
or the positive if it hasn't been advertised. Ms. Barnes, by all means, I absolutely agree, but I believe Mr. Hodges was just trying to get a feel for the location next to, not that we have any additional parking promised to us or we're under any lease agreement or any other agreement. We were just trying to get a feel for what in the immediate area. That was only for information purposes only. I understand, but as the secretary to the board. Oh, 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 hold on, Matt, 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 hold on. Hold, 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 hold on. Everybody, uh, if you're not speaking, please mute your mics because there's a lot of background and echoing. Ca Council, you're not asking for that to be considered as parking, correct? No, sir. We're not asking to be considered as part of this application. We can strike the whole conversation as to the possibility of that being parking, correct? We can, because it's not part of the application, correct? We can proceed. Well, so then, uh, in that case, we're only looking at 13 park parking spaces and 87 or 90, um, I don't know how many parking spaces. 98 are required, we're looking at 12, not 13. 12. Okay. And 98 are required, yes. Thank you. Commissioner Dumas would like to uh, talk. Well, I live in walking distance from um, this uh, building, and I could say on Sundays it's plenty of parks around the corner on uh, 12th Ave and on East 18th, and that does cross over Governor Street. It's a barbershop right there on the corner of Governor and East 18. And on Sunday, it is plenty of parking. So I will give you that. <laughs> we intend to take advantage of that at this point, um, but we will continue effort to try and come in compliance. We will try to reach out if we, you know, if the need arises. We hope to have this be a very flourishing um, community location for everybody to take advantage of. And if it does, we'll continue to try and find the accommodations that it would need. I have a question um, for for the pastor. If, if you know, how many members do you have in your congregation? Bishop Chapman. Yes. Yes. Um, I'm Han. Currently, currently, we have approximately. I'm going to say seventy right now. And, and how many do you bus on Sunday? Most of, on Sundays, most of our parish units, they carpool, and, and we maybe bus probably not even 20, because most of the, they, they live in walking distance. They walk. And those who don't, they, you know, carpool, they come together, the elder, we, we really have to pick up the elderly and children, everyone else, most, and most of our youth, they walk. Because I'm a nurse and we're big on exercise too, so they, they, they do walk. So I yeah. am proposing, I'm sorry, that's what I'm proposing. I definitely don't believe we will have a problem with the parking. And, and out, of the, out of the people that usually use the van, do they, do they drive, are they drivers or, or do they have, or don't they have license? Uh, some do have a uh, license and some don't. But the, the persons who we have designated deacon to 
drive the van. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. This is Commissioner Watkins. Can I can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, it's totally right, Commissioner. Um, I visited that site <clears throat> last night and um the place I had to park was on the East 18th side in your driveway. And there was no church. The business was closed, which was the um, car facility on the corner of 12th Ave and East 19th Street, who always, when it's open, double car cars are double parked on 12th Ave and East 19th Street. The only spot I was able to find a park last night was in your driveway. And this was around about 8 o'clock last night. I was checking out the facilities. And um, not only do you have Calvary Baptist on 12th Ave, because your, your facility is right in the middle of the block of um, 12th Ave and 11th Ave. On 11th Ave, there's another church. Mm -hmm. On 11th Ave and 10th Ave, there's a big old apartment building that goes from 10th Ave to 11th Ave. And those people are trying to find a, a spot to park. When you say you have to have 98, I mean, at least 86 parking spaces, it's going to be a disaster for parking because the streets are narrow and people will be double parking all over that area. So we're talking about COVID right now. When people are allowed to park or come into these buildings with the three churches right there, it's going to be double parked all over the place. So we must take all of that into consideration. Well, I, 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 I am thinking maybe that might be unforeseen, but I have been there late, uh, like seven or so when I, because I like to drive by just to check on the building and there's always plenty of park in the nighttime. When you go that time, I never really had a problem to park and I don't uh, allow parking in the driveway. So I don't park in the driveway. I park on the street. I really never had a problem finding a park that time in the evening. If I go there on a Saturday in the daytime or a weekday in the daytime, yes. But that time in the evening, I never had a problem with, with parking. So like I said, maybe like when you went last night, maybe something was going on. But normally, I don't. I don't see that. And we're only talking about this building just for Sunday and Wednesday through Fridays, correct? Correct. Well, primarily three days, Sunday, Wednesday, and Friday. It's not, it's not the through, it's not Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. It's just the three days. No, no, it's, 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 it's three days, but it's Wednesday, Wednesday night. Friday nights and Sunday mornings. Yes, sir. Correct. That, that's correct. Yes. Okay. Any other commissioners have questions for Mr. Evans, please? If not, Marco, can you open up to the public, please? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Members of the public, if you have questions of the architect with regard to this testimony you just gave, please call 973-321-1579. Again, the phone number is 973-321-1579. And then when prompted to, please enter the meeting ID number of 711-680-0071. Again, the ID number is 711-680-0071. And this is if you have questions of the architect. Let's give it a moment, see if anybody calls. Sure. 
Chairman Jackson, and this is Commissioner Hill. I have a question. Jackson? Yes. Yeah. Commissioner Minaro has a question, then I'll open it up to the public. Yes. Go ahead, go ahead, Commissioner. Um, my question, uh, I don't know who, I think maybe from Mr. Evans, is is there a drop-off designation for the bus designated in area? There's no designated drop-off on the... Um, on the um, site plan, there's nothing shown, um, or we didn't propose any at this time, but um, the East 18th Street side basically is the front entrance. That would be the side that would most likely be used for um, the drop-off and pickup. There's a, uh, let me go into this here. One minute, I'll get you that. And so we have uh, in and out curb cut, the buses would be able to enter uh, coming in the, in, the, in the entrance arrow here, you can see, and then they could turn around. We have 34.3 feet between the two parking spaces, which 24 feet is the minimum required in its normal uh, backup space. So we have an extra 10 feet for circulation within the site. So that would give us uh, ample space for buses or, you know, like the smaller buses to come in and um, pull in adjacent to the entry and then pull out um, for drop-off and pick-up. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Um, this is uh, Commissioner Furman. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, now, please uh, ask a question, maybe to the attorney. Go ahead. I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I didn't hear you. Okay, thank you. Uh, was there any uh, notification letter sent um, to the neighbors about this project? Yes, the 200 feet requirement and the letter sent by the assessor, and then the owners adjoining property owners that were in interest were all certified, certified the meals as required. Um, that was done on the 14th of September, taken to the post office and stamped for that date. We had those uh, mailing proofs. Absolutely. Um, Mrs. Richardson, you are correct. I did receive it. I received a copy. I'm still waiting for the originals in my office. But yes, she has submitted the proper paperwork. I just do need the originals in my office. We understand. We were just waiting for some of the green cards to come back. Absolutely. And we discussed that. And yes, um, Mrs. Richardson has done her part. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your very kind answer. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yes, sir. If there's no more questions from the commissioners, you want to open it up to the public. Is there any calls? We have no calls at this time, Chairman and Commissioners. Chairman Thackson, yes. Chairman Thackson, yes. this is Mr. I, I just, I'm just a little concerned with the letters that are, that were sent out, as um, Commissioner Furman stated, that he asked that question. I wanted to know if that's enough, if that, if you see, that, if you think that that's enough time, because right now, the way the mail is delayed, I've been just receiving correspondence from people from September 1st. If the letter were mailed out September 14th, then I just feel like not maybe not everyone received everything. Um, I I think that um, I will hand this over to the attorney. May I speak, Mr. Larocco? I make sure that all the um, people are notified within 200 feet, and I will not schedule anything without Mr. Larocco's position um, permission. And it was done, and Mr. Larocco knows that that without his authority, I cannot um, place an applicant on a meeting. So this was done 
within the municipal land use law requirements? Yes, uh, just give me, give me one second, please. I apologize, but I, I I don't since I'm not in the office right now. I don't have the Cox book with me. Uh, Mr. Caparosi, do you have the Cox book by any chance there? Oh uh, yes, I have a, a Cox book here. You can do me a favor. What I wanted to do is I just wanted to read the language. Maybe Mr. Richardson could do it just for the benefit of the for commissioners where it, where it deals with the, the mailing requirement, the notice requirement for the mailing, the timeline. I'm trying to pull it up myself on, online so I can just read it for the benefit. All right, just give me a minute. I'll try to get to it. I have Ms. Caparosi. So you're at 18-1.2? Well, it's a, no, well, I'm, I'm in the actual, the notices, NJSA okay. uh, 40, 55D-15, Section D, a notice, a uh, notice by personal service, certified mail or email with confirmation that the email is delivered, Shall be made to the clerks of the adjoining Miss Pally. Well, that's for that's for Miss Pally. So now we get to for a two hundred foot list. But but in short, without pulling it up, it, it has to be delivered at least ten days prior. Uh, I don't have the exact language, but it, 10 days prior. So although I understand with the mail, it, 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 it may be better practice right now to do it more than 10 days to ensure delivery under municipal land use, as long as they have proof that they effectuated service by certified mail at least 10 days, and our affidavit indicates such and the receipts, although we don't have all the green cards back, we have all the receipts. Um, it's Marco, so she's yeah, Marco, it, it does say uh, a notice shall be given at least 10 days prior to the date of the hearing. The date of the hearing is not counted as one of the 10 days. And it's not a Cox book. Right. So today's the 24th. Oh, uh, excuse me. May I uh, interject here, Mr. Lavaco? Oh, hold on a moment. What so, what day was it? What day was it dropped off today? If it was dropped off on the fourteenth, the twenty fourth is not counted. So uh, uh, I don't know if. Uh, uh... I, I I really don't know why we're making a big issue out of this. Oh, I mean, um, it should be ten days. Yeah, it's still ten days. No, no, Maggie. Did you receive a copy stating that they were mailed out? I 
I'm here to teach. Chairman? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. I'm here. Um, I'm looking through the file. I'm going to explain and rectify this because um, I submitted the letter and the list of property owners on September 11th to Teresa Richardson. Um, she got it via email and faxed actually to her office. She did submit to me the documents because we spoke about it due to the mail discrepancies. I asked her to send me what she did and the date of the meeting that she submitted it, am I correct Mrs. Richardson? In saying that you had submitted all your notices and everything was on September 18th. Am I correct? Submitted that day, correct. Well, that's right, so she, let me speak first please. I'm just going to ask you a question. I'm going to go into my calendar and read my date. So I'm going to go here because she did. The thing is because of the issues that we have, I am actually allowed in my office to email her the listing, which she got an ample time. But, 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 but we don't need to go into all that. All I need to know is where is it? What? What are the days that it was dropped off on the 14th, correct, Mr. Stamped by the post office. It's on the 14th. On the 14th. 14th. Okay. Can you do me a favor? Can you show me where the date was on the 14th? Yes, I'm looking for it. Okay. Um, I don't have it here. Um, I'm looking for it. Okay. Um, I'm looking for it. Okay. Um, I'm looking for it. Okay. Um, I'm looking for Wow. She submitted it in Elmwood Park, United States Postal Service. Oh, it's the 12th. Yeah. September 12th. Yeah. Uh, so, so, uh, so we're good. So give them more days. Okay. Yeah, she, she has submitted it. I have it. All right. Let, let, let's roll on. The 14th would have been 10 it's, days. It's the only thing that... We have no callers at this time, commissioners and staff. Okay, Miss Miss Richardson, your next witness, please. That's it for our case, sir. We have no other witnesses. Okay, then do you want to sell up, please? Well, um, I'll submit as to the testimony given by my witnesses as well as um, just a brief summary uh, reiterating what we earlier said. Uh, this location is a suitable well suited for uh, the plans that we've laid out. Um, I'm just finding out that there's a historical preservation issue there, which even makes this much more suitable location for this for this 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 proposed uh, house of worship in light of what is required uh, by the historical society. Uh, it'd be interesting to get their input on what else we would need to do to do it. And certainly we would accommodate any and all uh, requirements that they require as a condition uh, to preserve the integrity of the property. Um, we want to do this as an advancement, a great improvement to a property that really needs, uh, really needs to be out of the state of disrepair. Uh, and with that, we submit. Are you finished? I am. Okay. Well, Mr. Araka, should you read this in the record about historic preservation? I don't know what to do with this. I never said it. This was news to me. What do you have? you have a letter there, Maggie?
Gary. Yes, sir. I understand you saying that the, the building is historical, but the property is not in the historical district, correct? Uh, that is correct, uh, uh, Joe. The, the, uh, from what I understood, the Historic Preservation Commission just wanted to uh, let the board know about the, uh, I guess the building was a, a part of a, a part of the Silk City, uh, one of the buildings back then that was uh, constructed and operated uh, uh, for uh, the industrial of, of part in Patterson, and uh, I guess that was one of the buildings that were, was used that way uh, between 1900 and 1931. And uh, uh, they were concerned about uh, uh, just the how the building was going to be altered with the facade and, uh, and any other exterior uh, changes to the to the building. Uh, they just wanted to bring it to the board's attention. The fact that uh, they didn't call in and cite anything specific, I would assume that that was just their concerns. And Mr. Evans said that he would run it by uh, the Historic Commission uh, for any input. I guess they were their concern with like maybe signs or, 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 or doing something else to the building that would make it look more modern than it actually is and uh, uh, lose that preservation of uh, history. So uh, the fact that they didn't call in and the fact that Mr. Evans said he would communicate with them, I think that should come to the board. Yeah, I agree. But let's, let's, just put the, let's just put the letter into the file. Okay. Okay, uh, 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 Maggie, you have to slide the letter up or shrink it a little bit so that they can read it. That's just the, the he headline. Should I read it now, Chairman Thaxton? Go ahead, Maggie. September 23rd, 2020, addressed to Chairman Thaxton um, regarding Fairhurst Company, Silk Mill, 568-572 East 19th. Am I on the same application here? We can't see the letter. Um, excuse me, gentlemen, I can't see the letter. You got to either shrink it or scroll it as you read. Gentlemen, um, they can't see it. Shrink it. Can you see it now? Can you see it? That's the heading. You can scroll it on your uh, computer. I scrolled mine, so. You're able to scroll it? I tried. Um, yes, you, you can scroll it. There's a, uh, if you don't have a dial on your mouse, there's a, a bar to the right. And you can just. Uh, just uh, Up and down. Yeah. Uh, put your mouse on the bar and draw it and, and, and drag it out. No, they want to see this. Do you see that now? Yeah, the, the, the problem is, although we can scroll it, it, it needs to be scrolled or and done in a way so anybody who's watching the public can see it as well. All right, so can you share this with the public? All right, you just have your IT guy scroll it for him. It's working. You just gotta give me a minute. Hold on. Okay. Okay. For the record, we're gonna mark this as board exhibit one. Can you see it now? Hello. It's just just re re read read it. Okay. Hold on. Thank 
for the July 18, 2019 Board of Adjustment application to convert the subject industrial mill into a house of worship. In 2012, the city of Patterson completed an extensive architectural and historic survey of its industrial mills. Um, this survey confirmed the eligibility of the entirety of the subject property for the municipal, state, and national registers of historic preservation. The places that are available are the City of Patterson previously commissioned architectural service in 1987 and 1996, which certified the same eligibility. The Historic Preservation Commission has not initiated proceedings to designate the subject property to the Municipal Register of Historic Places, nor is the property listed on the state and national registers. However, for a 300 Dash 13, section of the City of Patterson Municipal Code, the powers and duties assigned to the Commission allow for submission of comments to the appropriate City of Patterson Board when impacts to a historic property are proposed. The Fair, the Fairhurst and Company Silk Mill significance of the City of Patterson is substantial and its integrity is excellent. The mill was constructed heard 1900 and operate until 1931. Today, the mill is representative of a period of tremendous industrial expansion, which distinguishes Patterson as the Silk City. Additionally, the significance of the subject property is closely attached to the adjacent Savoy Shirt Company complex, now Rico Foods, which is similarly intact. I respect, respectfully request the board that as the board considers the submitted application, the board also considers stipulating historic preservation commission review to ensure that all exterior changes are executed in accordance with standards, guidelines, and best practices for the treatment of historic building. Sincerely, J. Jeff Executive Director, Historic Preservation Commission. And this is his letter from the city of Patterson. Thank you. Thank you. It was a mouthful, but this is what he stated. And I did send this to everyone. I apologize if you did not get it, but this is something that Gary Paparazzi can address with Mr. LaRocca and our chair. Thank you. So the, the, the council summed up. Gary, did you finish something up? Hey, Gary, can, um, can you uh, give your summation, please? Yes, yes, uh, uh, Jeremy. And, and, and commissioners, uh, the two big uh, variances uh, that you're looking at tonight are obviously use, which requires five affirmative votes. And the second... Uh, the variance is the parking, uh, which is you know always uh, an issue with the Patterson. Ninety-eight spaces are required, and twelve uh, spaces are provided. Now, uh, of course, uh, I always refer to the commissioner's uh, uh, knowledge of the area and uh, living in the city, knowing how the uh, parking is and whether or not. This application would succeed in this area without being a detriment to the uh, neighborhood. I appreciate the fact that the uh, ministry is trying to get parking. I appreciate the fact that they have a, a minibus, a 15 seat minibus that was attested to earlier. And you know, I also appreciate the fact that it's uh, only Sunday, Wednesday, and Friday. Now, on the opposite side of the coin, it, it, it could expand, you know, uh, uh, we assume 
that it may or it should once uh, this pandemic is uh, over. Uh, I know it is a uh, walking distance to a lot of the uh, parishioners, but we also have to take into consideration bad weather and climate weather, rain, and weigh everything accordingly. So again, I defer the parking to the commissioners uh, uh, and their knowledge of the area, and it's just that the uh, use variants would need five affirmative votes. That is all, Chairman, and I would answer any questions that any of the commissioners have if there are any. Thank you. Gee, at this time, can I get a motion from, from the commissioners? I'm here, Chairman. Commissioners, ready for the vote? No commissioners want to make a motion. I'm make. Do you have the motion in front of you for your approval? Yes, I do, sir. One moment. What is your motion yes. to approve or deny the application of hope and love? Approve, approve it? Approve. Thank you. Okay, Chairman Jackson makes the motion that the application of Hope and Love International Deliverance Ministries Incorporated 568 572 East 19 Street, Block 3401, Lot 19 and 20. To convert, and the premise is that, oh, I'm sorry, 568, whatever. To use, okay, to approve the application to a two story industrial warehouse into a house of worship in a residential zone. The applicant does not meet the requirements of the zoning ordinance section 500-5.3 places of worship in residential districts. The application will provide 13 parking spaces of the 90 parking spaces that are required. This is for use both D variants as a site plan in an RP4WRA-2 zone. Be granted any amendments or conditions to the proposal, there were none, and subject to the review and approval, if applicable, of the following, but not limited to city engineer, say county planning board, say county engineer, HEP, soil conservation district, and building calls of the state of New Jersey. So it is moved by Chairman Thaxon and seconded by. Good evening, Commissioner Furman. Second. Thank you, Commissioner Furman. Chairman, may I proceed with the vote? Go ahead. Commissioner Dumas, yes or no? Commissioner Dumas? Yes. Commissioner Furman? For the record, before my vote, uh, Mr. Chairman, can I please uh, make a comment? Absolutely. The reason uh, my vote is yes is because I, I believe this project is going to benefit a lot of people in our city of Patterson. And um, in addition, we are um, improving the building that has been abandoned. My vote is yes. Thank you. Commissioner Furman. Commissioner Hodges, your vote, please. Uh, my vote is no. Um, I would be much happier if the additional apartments and talk about were part of the application, and I am very concerned about the fact that you've got a potential of 200 seats there. You only have 770 some odd current parishioners, 
Um, the expansion will, will, doesn't seem to have any place, which, any place to go and may be created a, a burden on the community. I, I do wish uh, luck and I hope that they are successful in expanding, but I, I don't see how the conditions are currently right for that. Thank you, Commissioner Hunt. Is Commissioner Levine, yes or no? No. no. Commissioner Minaldo, yes or no? So my, what's the problem here? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm here. Um, my vote is no, and I concur with uh, Commissioner Hodges where the, there is ample space for growth inside the building, but however, outside the concern for the parking is just too overwhelming. So my vote is no. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Roheen. I'm on it now. Thank you. Commissioner Chairman Daxton, your vote. Well, <laughs> Um, uh, um, my vote is yes, but it, it, there might be room for 200 people, who knows, but it's a house of worship and we need more houses of worship in the city of Patterson, not only in the city of Patterson, but all over. So, and I know you're probably concerned about parking, but parking is going to be a big issue in the city. It, it's always going to be an issue. Uh, my vote is yes, Maggie. Thank you. The vote is three affirmative and four no. Uh, Mr. Maronka, what that's, is the that, application? That's a that's a this application has been denied. Open Love International, Deliverance Ministries, 568, 572 East 19th Street has been denied. Thank you, everyone. But we do have four minutes and resolutions to be adopted whenever you're ready. Chairman? Go ahead, Mayor. We have minutes um, for May 28th, June 11th, June 25th, and July 9th. And we have a motion to approve. A minute. Did not hear that. Yes. Hodges, thank you. First motion for minutes. Can we have a second motion? Second, like Commissioner Rohim. Thank you, Commissioner Rohim. Both is as follows. Okay. Commissioners, Commissioner Dumas. Yes. Commissioner Furman. Commissioner Furman? Yes. Commissioner Hodges? Yes. Commissioner Levine? Commissioner Minaudo? Yes. Uh, Commissioner Rogin? Yes. Commissioner Watkins? Yes. And Chairman Dex. Yes. Thank you. We will now begin with the minutes. Uh, Mr. LaRocca? Uh, yes. This resolution that's for adoption is a resolution of approval for 2071 Marriage Street LLC for property. Can everybody please mute their mic? For property located at 108 4th Avenue. Block 2111, Lot 17, in the R3 zone. This was an application constructed three story, two family dwelling. It was heard on July 11, 2019, and September 12, 2019. Following conclusion, there was a vote for approval. Uh, seven in favor, zero against. The votes in favor were. Commissioner Hodges, Commissioner Khan, Commissioner Levine, Commissioner Mondelli, Commissioner Roheen, Commissioner Dumas, and Chairman Paxton. Will someone move this resolution for adoption? So moved. Is that Commissioner Hodges? Yes, it is. 
And do we have a second? Thank you, Vice Chair. Commissioners, Commissioner Dumas. Yes. Commissioner Hodges. Yes. Commissioner Levine. Yes. Commissioner Rohim. Yes. And Chairman Daxton. Yes. Thank you. The next application. East 35th Street Holding LLC, a property located at 503-505 East 35th Street, Block 7901, Block 30 in the R2 zone. This is an application that was occurred on April 9, 2020, May 28, 2020. At the conclusion, There is a motion for denial of this application made by Commissioner Newmas, which was seconded by Commissioner Hodges. There was six votes in favor of denial, one, one vote against denial. It was denied on motion. Uh, Commissioner Dumas, Commissioner Hodges, Commissioner Mondelli, Commissioner Roheen, Commissioner Soriano and Chairman Daxton voted in favor of denial. Commissioner Levine uh, voted against the denial. Will someone move the adoption of this resolution? Commissioner Dumas will move for denial. Second. 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 Commissioner Hodges. Uh, Madam Secretary, do not call Commissioner Levine since he did not vote in favor of it. Duly noted. Commissioners, Commissioner Dumas. Yes. Thank you. Commissioner Hodges. Yes. Commissioner Roheen. Yes. And Chairman Saxton. Yes. The application, the resolution is for denial. The text resolution we have is from Melanie Cologne, property located at 269, that's 271 Illinois Avenue, also in Melanie, 7603, lot 22, in the R1 zone. Applications converted one family dwelling to a two family dwelling. Use and bulk variance to site plan approval. This was heard on June 11, 2020. The inclusion of the application. There was a motion made by Commissioner Dumas for approval, which was seconded by Commissioner Soriano. There was uh, a vote actually of eight in favor. Commissioner Dumas, Commissioner Hodges, Commissioner Malai, Ellie, Commissioner Roheen, Commissioner Soriano, Commissioner Watkins, and Chairman Daxon all voted in favor. Open it. Commissioner Hodges first, second. Is there a second? Yes. Second. Thank you, Chairman Daxon. The vote is Chairman Commissioner Dumas. Yes. Commissioner Hodges. Yes. Commissioner Levine. Call me on this one, Marco? Yeah. Yes. Y yes. Commissioner Roheen. Yes. Commissioner Watkins. Yes. yes. And Chairman Daxton. Yes. Thank you. Commissioner, the last resolution we have is uh, a, a resolution for approval for JCM investors. 12 LLC for property located at 580 East 23rd Street, known as Block 3404, Lot 17, in the R3 zone. Application to construct a three story, two family dwelling on a vacant lot. Uh, the applicant sought all variances as well as site plan approval. This application was heard on June 25th, 2020. At the conclusion of the application, after oral testimony, Commissioner Mondelli made a motion for the approval of the application. 
which was seconded by Commissioner Hodges. And there, after that, there's a vote, seven in favor, zero against. Commissioner Hodges, Commissioner Lewine, Commissioner Roheen, Commissioner Soriano, Commissioner Watkins, Commissioner Mondelli, and, and Chairman Thaxon all voted in favor. Move it. Commissioner Hodges, do we have a second? Second. Chairman Tax and Secretary, please pull the board. Commissioner, Commissioner Haas. Yes. Commissioner Levine. Yes. Commissioner Roheen. Yes. Commissioner Watkins. Yes. And Chairman Tax. Yes. Thank you very much. There are no more resolutions or minutes. We have no further business for the Board of Adjustment this evening. Thank you. We need an adjournment. Good night, everyone.